Hi, and welcome to Better Boating in Connecticut. My name is Jerry Desmond. I'm your host today. And we're bringing you a, a show today uh, where we're going to visit some schools here in Connecticut that actually do boat building as one of their opportunities for their students. And one of the uh, uh, schools here in Connecticut that do an exceptional job is uh, Guilford High School here in Guilford, Connecticut, right near our shoreline. And I'm here with uh, Dave Hackett and Kara Mulqueen, uh, two of the teachers and instructors here that oversee the students you see behind me um, in the boat building process. So maybe for a second I'll tap into you, Dave. You could tell us a little bit about um, the program, a little bit about um, the boat building process. Okay. Um, a few years ago, because we live on the shoreline, we developed, I developed a boat building course that was strictly for that, but then we thought about <clears throat> combining that with other disciplines. So this class that we teach now is a combined interdisciplinary, <clears throat> excuse me, an interdisciplinary class with combining English and maritime history with boat building. And Kara can speak more to that. Um, we set up the class so that it's a metaphor of the ship and the sailor in the sea. So we study maritime literature in combination with the process of building boats and designing boats. And uh, this is our fifth year and it seems to be going really well. It's one of the most popular classes at Guilford High School. And that makes it a little unique too because you've, you've combined uh, literature or, or English uh, with the boat building process. So it becomes an academic experience as well as a practical experience of building boats. And there's a lot of carryover when you look at risk management. And we talk about the bounty and there's a, a present day bounty and how they, when they went out to sea, what was important. Should they have had more life jackets? Should they have had the generators all working before they sank? So, so it's that's a nice connection with nice um, connection. things in history and then some of the practical things with boating and boating safety. And that's great. And, and Dave, also, um, you are one of our instructors here. You teach the actual boating license class here in the school, as many of our schools do, and we're always looking to grow that program, and that's, that's coming along well, and we thank you for all your help there as well. So as we, um, as we move along here, I just wanted to have the students um, tell us their name and a little bit about their boating experience, give them a chance to say something quick about their life in boating, and uh, I'll start with you. All right, uh, my name's Anthony, and um before this class, I've only ever been really kayaking and paddle boarding. Yeah. Hi, my name's Addison, and since I was little, I've been sailing. Hi, my name's Austin, and I've been on boats for pretty much my whole life. My name's Eric, and I don't boat. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Samir. I like to go out on kayaks and canoes, primarily for fishing. My name is Josh. I've been uh, power boating for about three or four years now. My name is Eric. I've been boating for about two years. Uh, my name's Sam, and I primarily kayak. Uh, my name's Austin. I grew up on the water, and I pretty much live on a boat in the summer. My name is Danielle. I've been boating since I was little, and we go sailing and powder power boating. My name's John. I primarily kayak, but getting into some skiffs now, building one, so that's exciting. <laughs> My name is Hank. Um, I mostly just canoe and kayak. My name is Mackenzie, and I've grown up on the water. My name is Tim, and I'm building a kayak. Uh, my name is Danny, and mostly I just go boating for fishing. That's great. OK, so as we see, a lot of you are here have an interest in boating already. That brings you into this class. Um, so. Maybe we could take a minute and talk about the process. How does this, in general, how does this process go as far as boat building goes? Do you want to address that, Dave? Sure. Well, we start with uh, them picking a boat. <clears throat> and they, they have to follow through the plan and go through. But we've gotten to the point where I can build, or I can let them build a number of different boats. We have skiffs. We have kayaks. This year, we have four paddle boards. And we've got two hydroplanes in the works as well. So that we ha I can do quite a variety of boats. And the process is always taking the plan and going through step by step from a large loft of it on the floor and then cutting out the pieces and going through. And they're about, I don't know, three quarters of the way through. You can see this skiff has taken shape. This kayak has taken shape. And we look forward to, we do a launch day in June at Lake Quantipog. And we take them all out for the day and test them. And it's a lot of fun. Thanks, Dave. Um, or the other thing I just wanted to mention quick, um, if you all, you all are working on taking the boating course and going through the process, have you all heard about the new safe water skiing endorsement law? You have? 
all of you know that today you have to be 16 to drive a boat and pull a skier, where it used to be you could be 12 and operate all the boats. Do, all, do any of you do any water skiing or tubing? You do? So you've been telling your friends and telling your family a little bit about that. That's good. Um, so when it comes to that, um, life jackets, they're all, in your class, you've learned all about life jackets, I'm sure, and about the importance of those. We've had a lot of people we've lost not wearing life jackets over the years. You guys are all aware of that. Kind of spread that word around a little bit, too. That's good. Okay, so with your skills here, I'm just going to select some people. Uh, maybe I'll start with you. Um, the skills that you learn in this boat building, what do you plan on using those skills for going forward? Is there something you plan on doing? Um, well, I didn't know how to woodwork at all before this class. Uh, so the whole process of making my boat and learning how to use all the tools and the machines has really helped me learn how to woodwork. So hopefully in the future I can use that for something. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, this, it's not just the boat building skill. It's also about learning how to build in general, right? And that's, that's a very helpful, obviously, in life down on the line, whether it's your home or anything else you might be building. How about you? Uh, I'm actually pursuing a uh, career in the uh, fire service. So having a general knowledge of hand tools and uh, not just carpentry in general is good to uh, be more comfortable with working with tools and working with your hands in order to uh, further your education. That's great. You're going to go into a service. It'd be a very valuable service. That's awesome. Um, so in addition to that, um, we talked about life jackets. We talked about the new safe load, uh, water skiing endorsement law. What are some of the um, precautions that you guys take? Uh, we have power boaters here. Um, you are one. And how many people are paddle boaters? You are. You are. So I'm going to start with you. I'll come to you a little bit. What are some of the things you do to stay safe when you're paddle boarding out there? Well, first thing I do is tell people I'm going to be going. Um, it's really important that you let people know you're going because if you just disappear and no one knows you're boating, then if something happens, it could be really devastating. Um, after that, make sure you have your proper equipment, like your uh, your life preserver, um, in case you need a flashlight at light to signal people. Mm -hmm. um, just general stuff like that. Right. The first the first one you mentioned was the float plan, n yeah. officially known as a float plan, right? And you leave that with the family. That's very important, especially as young uh, students. Um, all of you are very anxious, obviously, to go out and have fun. Sometimes mom and dad aren't around. You need to let them all know that, you know, where you're going to be. Because um, so many times you're anxious to go out there. But if something happens, you do want to know where someone is. And those life jackets, you're wearing that all the time, I'm sure, on that uh, paddle boat. Um, who else? Let me see. Who is a power boater here? There you are. So what are some of the things that uh, you do to stay safe on the water? Well, you have to make sure you have a life jacket for every person in the boat. Um, some, like, signaling device, like, or sound-making device. Um, Want to make sure you have fuel, obviously. Um, when you have friends, do you have friends that come out in a boat with you? Uh, do you, uh, when they come on board, do you do any type of briefing and tell them a little bit about where the safety equipment is and how they works on your boat when they come? What do you do to keep them safe? Well, yeah, most of my friends are also like fellow boaters, so they know how to work a life jacket and stuff. But obviously, if I had brought someone that was never on a boat, and it's like you got to tell them how to work a life jacket and whatnot. Very good. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, so can you tell us a little bit, maybe, Carrie, you could tell us a little bit about um, the boats here. When will these boats be completed, and what happens to these boats after they're done? <laughs> Well, theoretically, the boats will be completed um, before June 1st. Um, and the last part of it, the finishing part, is really exciting. We have um, we received a grant from West Marine uh, to help us out with some of our um, some of our boating finishing products. So that's exciting. So they named the boats, and part of the final exam from the English side of it is they present their boats to us before they set sail on the water. They tell us a little bit about the development of them, why they were named what they were named. Um, and it's really a fantastic day and a nice closer for the for the school year. And it's a fun activity. Oh, it's a great activity, yeah. And you've got a, and, and you've got a great you've got a great um, setup here. Great. It looks like all your boats. You've got several boats in development here, and that's that's wonderful. So, um, I want to thank all of you for having us here today and exposing and showing your program and how it works and all that. Um, we're going to be going um, to visit another school um, right after this. Um, and so, 
before we go and before we take a break, we're going to take a, a public service announcement break here in a second. But before we go, maybe um, because of the importance of those life jackets, maybe we can give everybody a, a one last always wear your life jacket. What do you think? Can we do that? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. So one, two, three, always wear your life jacket. Bye-bye, little wave. We're going. Thank you. We love it. It's so much fun. <laughs> it's exciting. Esto es vida. Why do I have to wear a life jacket? We wear it to be safe. I've got mine on. We're teaching our kids about safe boating. Cogí un pescado así de grande. We all love this life. Wear it and love the life. This message brought to you by the National Safe Boating Council. Welcome back to Better Boating in Connecticut. Um, as I said earlier, we're visiting schools that are doing boat building programs within the school and educating students on boat safety. We've come down the 95 corridor and we're down in, at Hand High School in Madison, Connecticut. And we're here today to talk to some of the students here who also have a boat building program. And uh, for starting off, I think I'd like to let the students here um, say their name and a little bit about their boating experience. Maybe we could do that and I'll let you take the mic and uh, kind of pass it along. Okay, so just pass it along, give your first name. And I'm Charlie and I've been boating for pretty much my whole life. And okay. I'm Zach and I just go out fishing sometimes. That's about it. I'm Brennan and I took this class because I love working with my hands. I'm John, I've been boating for uh, six years. I'm Adam, and uh, I boat all the time in the summer. I'm Emily, and I have no experience. I'm Vincent, and I love water. I'm James, and I like to sail. I'm Kyle, and I've been boating for my whole life. I'm Nick, and I've basically just grown up around the water my whole life. I'm Chase, I've grown up on boats, and I love it. Thank you, thanks guys. So, um, you know, we just came from Guilford High School, and um, now we're here at hand. It's pretty competitive between the two schools. Is that fair to say? Yeah, all your sports? Yeah. So um, I'm sure in the boat building world, there might be a little bit going on too. They're both programs that are trying to feed off of each other. So yeah. So I want to first um, start off for a minute um, talking with Brian Amente, and I got Kim Connor here. Um, Brian, can you tell us a little bit about the history of the program, how it started and, and how it works? Well, basically, this program started when I started working at Hand High School in the late 90s. So I wrote the curriculum as part of a graduate course in technology education and then introduced it. And then from there, it just took off um, way back in, I think, 98, 99. I contacted what was DEP at the time, which is now DEEP, and got certified to teach the safe boarding part of it and introduced that into the curriculum also. And ever since then, I think we've probably built over 100 canoes and skiffs and kayaks and things that you see laying around here. So, Yeah, you mentioned also that you, you do the uh, boating safety class here under our umbrella here, and you teach the licensing course here, if you will. And that's great. We are always looking to expand um, to schools to have uh, teachers in there become certified to teach the course and give opportunities for the students to get their certificates right in the school. Uh, Kim, you um, are down. You were get assigned to certain programs around the school and certain classes. This is your first time in boating. So how's your experience been here? How do you how do you like being down here? I think it's a lot of fun. I like doing more active things rather than sitting around all day. And this has been um, my family as well has grown up on the water. My son goes to Maine Maritime Academy. And uh, so this is fun for me. That's that's great. And, and, and this is a, a fun class for the students, too. And they're learning a lot of skills in this class as well, and as well as safety. Yeah. yeah. So um, maybe you'll take another second and you could tell us again, uh, Brian, a little bit about the process. Can you tell us a little about the, what happens the process from beginning to end here? Just a few things on how it, how it goes along. As far as the building of the boats or the, the class itself? The building of the boats. Basically, what they do is I have a series of plans that they can choose from, from kayaks all the way up to a 16-foot skiff. And they choose whichever boat that they want to build, and then we put together a materials list, and we go back and forth looking at costs and those kinds of things. Um, and then from there, we start the lofting process. So if you look, most of the boats that we build are out of plywood. 
because of the short time that we have. So we only have 60 days to, to work with. So they lay out or they loft up all their designs on the plywood. Then we start cutting them out and then basically get to the point where they're an actually a finished boat. Um, and if you look around, you can see normal lumber yard type materials. So two by fours and plywood and mahogany decking and deck screws. And what that does is it keeps the cost down, but we still use the same boat building process, if you will. So, so that's a little bit about how that comes together. That's great. And now, when you, when you finish these boats, uh, do, you, do you launch them? Do you test them? What, what happens to these boats when you're done? Basically, the, the kids take them home. So um, we have a limited time. We only have a 60-day course. So we're on a trimester schedule instead of a normal semester schedule. Um, so if we have time, we've put them in the local Bauer farm or we have a little kind of pond in front of the school. Sometimes we do that, but generally it's just kind of a rush to get the boat finished. So, That's good. Yeah, I, when, talking, when we were talking earlier um, with uh, Guilford, I, they do have a session where they put theirs in the water as well. That might not be a bad opportunity to have the two boat building classes in some kind of competition, right? So you never know. So um, just for a second, let me just pick out a few people and ask a few questions. Um, what, what is it you would hope to take away from this? Uh, or what do you take away from this class? What kind of skills or, or opportunities or things? That, what do you take away from this class besides producing a boat? Um, just like learning with uh, all the tools and stuff to build the boat. and. Uh, and then the safe boating course obviously gives us our license to uh, be able to use the boats. So, and how, how about how about you? Um, I'm kind of the same way. I've never really like this was really like the first tech ed class I really took. So like a lot of just hands-on learning that like is basic necessities that you need to build anything. So you're, you're gaining skills here, not just for boat building, but for other skills as well for building as well, right? Are all of you um, familiar? Are all of you familiar with the new uh, safe water skiing endorsement law? Yeah. You, all familiar? Yeah. you know how old you got to be now to drive a boat and pull a skier? Sixteen. 16. Yeah, very good. So you're you're getting there. Um, and it's all that's all new stuff, right? Started October first, two thousand fifteen. Do you guys do any skiing or towing? Do you do any of that? You have friends that do that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so. When you're out in the water, I'll take, if you're out in the water, you have a, do you have a boat? My friend does. You do. When you guys go out in that boat, what do, what do you do to stay safe out there? What are some of the safety precautions you take? Uh, you know, no drugs and alcohol, uh, obey the uh, laws in a no-wake zone, you know, not too fast. Uh, always wear a life jacket, more like water skiing or like wakeboarding or tubing, you know, any dangerous activities. Don't want to have any incidents. But other than that, I'm not really the driver, my friend is, but he obeys a lot of the laws. Stay safe. Who, who does have a boat here? Who has a boat that they drive? Family boat? You got family? You do? Yeah. So when you go on that boat, do you have friends that go out with you? Yeah, of course. And, and what, do you, what do you do when those friends come on? Do you do any kind of like, you talk to them about safety before you go out? You yeah, I mean, most of my friends have been going out, me and my family, for a long time. So, and some of them are boaters themselves. So we definitely, if they haven't been out with me before, we'll talk about some safety precautions, like where the life jackets are, or maybe if we're wearing them, just put them on at the dock. Um, maybe I'll show them how to use the boat in case of an emergency if something happens to me, just so they get a general idea of how to move it if I fall overboard or something. But yeah. So those are all. Those are all. Safety is obviously a very important thing in boating, and that's one of the things that we do is boating safety down in Old Lyme. And so uh, I guess in leaving here, I just want to um, before we leave, I want to say thank you for having us, the DEP at your school. Um, I hope that uh, this class has excellent boats that come out and. We hope that, like they do every year, right, and since the program started. And um, before we go, um, there's one thing I always have everybody say before we go. We do a little, uh, little blurt out to the public and tell them always wear their life jackets. So let's let's do that, right, on the count of three. Let's let everybody know that we'll give a little point and we'll talk about that. So one of the most important things we can do in boating is what? Always wear your life jacket. Very good. Thank you very much.